So in this video, I'm going to explain how to install the GNU Plus Linux operating system in a virtual environment. Some of the steps I'll take in this video will be very similar to if you were installing on a physical machine, but I'll have a separate video explaining the differences between installing on a virtual machine and on a physical machine. So as I said, today we're going to be looking at a virtual machine. So there are a few things that you're going to have to download beforehand. In the description below, you'll see a link to ubuntu.com. This is the distribution of the Linux operating system that we're going to be using, since it's the most widely used at the moment and probably what most people have experience with. So all you'll have to do is click download and download the LTS. This is the most stable version of Ubuntu. Make sure you've clicked the desktop version and not the server version. Um, I might explain how to set up a server in a different video, but for now, we're just looking at the desktop. Secondly, you're going to need the Oracle VirtualBox. This is the program that's going to run a virtual machine. The main page will look like this. You want to click this big button and download for Windows hosts if you're on a Windows machine or OS X hosts if you're on a Mac. So I've already downloaded these. First thing we're going to do is install VirtualBox. So this is just the installer here. So we're going to open that up, run. We're just going to install everything that's here. And I'm going to leave this at the default location. You can install it somewhere else if you like them. That warning there was just telling you that your network may cut out as it's installing the drivers for the virtual machine. So just be aware of that. The installer will at some point ask you for admin permissions. Just press yes when it asks for that. Here we're going to say install. Okay, so now VirtualBox has been installed. We're going to leave this checked because we want to start up VirtualBox. So we'll click Finish. So this is the VirtualBox home screen. And what we're going to want to do here is we want to make a new virtual machine. So let's click New. What will we call it? We'll call it Ubuntu. And you can see here that it's automatically detected that we're going to be installing Ubuntu Linux. And I'm just going to leave this as the default. So this is going to stick your virtual box in your uh, user folder. Here we're going to allocate memory to the virtual machine. So this slider will look different for you depending on how much memory is installed in your machine. So mine has 16 gigabytes, as you can see. Most people might have four or eight. Um, it really depends. I wouldn't recommend using any more than half of your memory because Windows is going to be using that. So you're going to be hosting an operating system within your operating system. So you're running two operating systems and both of them need a minimum amount. Now Windows is going to need more than Linux. So you can maybe get away with one gigabyte. I'm going to go for two. Um, I'm going to go for two gigabytes. Um, but it's really up to you. If you don't know, then probably go for halfway along this slider, if in doubt, or maybe a quarter. But no, I wouldn't say any less than one gigabyte of RAM, just to be safe. Here we need to make a virtual hard disk because you don't want to wipe, you don't want to write onto your physical disk. So we're going to create one now, if you don't already have one. And we're going to use the default version, which is a VirtualBox disk image. Now, because we're only going to be using VirtualBox, this doesn't really matter. But the other formats are for if you're going to use other virtualization software. 
we're going to say dynamically allocated. So here, you can read this if you want. Um, this is the default version. And it means that if we need more storage, then we can, we can allocate more. Um, 10 gigabytes is the default. For the sake of this tutorial, we're not going to need it anymore. So I'm going to create that now. So here we have our virtual machine. We can take a look at the different um, specifications we've given it. What we want to do now is insert the Ubuntu installation disk into a disk drive. So we're going to click settings for this machine. And we're going to go to storage. And here we've already got our hard disk drive and another disk drive here. So what we want to do is choose a disk file that we want to load into this disk drive. So I've got mine on my desktop in the tutorial folder, which is this here. You download this from Ubuntu, as I mentioned before. And we're going to open. So now that disk is in the disk drive. Our hard drive's fine. These settings should all be fine by default. I may go over each of them in more detail in another video, but for now, the default should be fine. We're going to press OK. And now we're going to power on the machine. This is where the steps are going to be very similar to with a physical machine. So this is if you've got your Ubuntu live disk, you've put the CD into the machine, and now you're just going to restart or power on the machine. So we're going to click Start. Here it asks which we want to boot to. So we're going to say the Ubuntu disk. That's what we want to boot. So this is just Ubuntu booting up. Um, don't worry if you get black screens like this. You'll see a lot more of these in the, as you get used to Linux. There's nothing wrong with that, usually. OK, so our machine's powered on, and it's loaded the Ubuntu installation menu. That may have taken maybe a minute at most, maybe longer. It depends on how quick your machine is and what resources you've dedicated to the virtual machine. So here, you could click Try Ubuntu to have a play around with it in the virtual machine. This is usual if you want to run it on a physical machine and just try it out. But we want to install it, so we're going to click Install Ubuntu. You can select your language from the side here. Ours is going to be English. Keyboard layout, so I happen to know that mine is UK regular. But if you're not sure of your keyboard layout, just type a bunch of characters here and it can detect which is which. So here we've got normal installation or minimal installation. And you can download updates while installing, or you can uncheck this to download them later. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to go with the minimal installation. And I'm going to talk about some different program choices that you've got, because with Linux, there are a multitude of different programs that do similar things, um, and some you might prefer to others. So we're going to talk about a few of those. But for now, all we want is a web browser, basic utilities, basic installation. So continue. Now, we're on a virtual machine which doesn't have anything on the disk, so Erase Disk and Install Ubuntu is what we want. So this is just warning us about the changes in the partition table. We're not going to go into partitioning right now. This is something that Ubuntu does for us. If you were to manually install the operating system, you would have to know how this works. So I'll go through in another video talking about these for anyone interested.
Here it asks where are you, um, this doesn't actually matter as long as the time zone is correct. Uh, that's all it's asking about. So it wants to know who you are. This is just for setting up a user on the machine. So while this installs, I thought I might talk a bit about the differences between the the minimal install and the regular install. So obviously the minimal install only has a few programs with it. It's actually got quite a lot for a minimal uh, install of a Linux distribution compared to other distributions. But the regular version would be if you wanted an out-of-the-box operating system with all the bells and whistles with all the different programs for word processing this sort of thing um, like windows sort of does or like more like mac um, mac os comes with a lot of different tools since this series is going to be more educational i'm going to talk through how to look for different programs that you can install on Linux and how to install them. So that's why I've chosen the minimal install option because I'd rather have an operating system that is quick to install, does what it needs to do and lets me show you what the Linux operating system is capable of. So after a few minutes of waiting for all that to install, um, we've got this installation complete message. This means that we're all done. Um, all we need to do is restart the, the computer. So we can press restart now. Now, if you were using a physical machine, what you would want to do is eject the CD. So it says here, yeah, please remove the installation medium, then press enter. So what we want to do is go into settings, storage. Now VirtualBox has automatically ejected this for us. Um, we removed that, which is nice. Um, but with a physical machine, you're going to have to physically remove the disk or USB pen drive. So we've removed it, so we're going to press enter. this notification so there we've been given the Ubuntu boot screen again Let's just wait for this to boot up. So there we go. Now we're into the Ubuntu operating system and we're ready to start using Linux. So thanks for watching this video. We've now got... Oh. <laughs> Obviously Ubuntu is trying to teach us how to use the operating system so that's, that's a nice feature. Yeah, so thanks for watching the video. We've now got Linux installed on a virtual machine or a physical machine and we're ready to start learning how to use it. So if this video has been helpful please leave a like. If you have any issues, any questions please leave them in the comments and if you'd like to learn more about the Linux operating system then please subscribe. There will be more videos in the future on the basics of how to use the Linux terminal for example, some different programs that are very useful maybe some scripting, some more advanced features. Uh, this is all to come in the future. So yeah, thanks for watching.